This Guru tribe is now extinct. Their tale is an unfortunate one and one of a misunderstanding that could have been avoided and could have potentially saved the tribe. Today we're going to talk about the Bunyip. Hello everyone, welcome to the table. My name's Nathaniel. This is a channel where we discuss lore around some of your favorite role-playing games such as Starfinder, Werewolf the Apocalypse, give some player tips and GM tips as well. If that's something you're interested in, I would love to have you join me at the table and you can do so by hitting the subscribe button, watching this video to the end. There is also a Discord server as well as a Patreon if you are so inclined. The Bunyip made their way to Australia right after the War of Rage. Their numbers had been absolutely destroyed and they were looking for a, a safe place to go, as many, as many of the changing breeds were. Now, the Bunyip didn't have that many wolf kin. And in fact, in Australia, there really wasn't anything there for them. That, however, did not stop them from trying to understand their new homeland and developing a deeper connection with it. They ended up striking a deal with the Macaulay, who taught the Bunyip how to breed with the Thylacine. The Thylacine was a marsupial found in the Australian continent all over the place. Now, the Bunyip did not form this deal with the Macaulay all on their own. The only reason that they were able to find the Macaulay and strike up some sort of bargain was because of the Camazots of Australia. There was actually a few different changing breeds who felt sympathetic towards the Bunyip, and the Naga in particular paid dearly for befriending the Bunyip, and we'll talk about that coming up. The Bunyip population was never very large to begin with, especially after the War of Rage. They did have some natural enemies as well. The Ananasi were not particularly fond of the Bunyip and they were hoping them to die out. It was happening just not fast enough for the Ananasi. So the Australian Ananasi, they convinced the native Aborigines to hunt the thylacine. And this also greatly affected the Bunyip and their breeding population, their breeding program, if you will. Now, the Bunyip were a special tribe in the sense that they were probably the most spiritual of any Guru tribe. So much so, in fact, that they didn't need anything to step sideways into the Umbra. Most Guru will need some sort of a focusing device, a reflective surface. The Bunyip just, they didn't need this. The Bunyip also prized wisdom above all else. Frenzies were very, very uncommon in the Bunyip tribe. They were very skilled warriors, but they would prefer to defuse a situation rather than go in and fight if it was at all possible. This also set them apart from the Guru because it is the polar opposite of how a Guru tribe operates. And it's really something that they could use a lot more of, but, but they don't. The Bunyip tribe, while small, was also very nomadic. There really wasn't a central organization. Each group or each roving band had one or two important figures within the, the group itself, but there wasn't a whole lot of communication between the tribe as a whole. And because of this, organizing for a large scale assault or coming together in times of trouble, this was very difficult for the Bunyip tribe. Even right up until the last years of their existence, they still didn't figure out a way to communicate together. And many of the last surviving groups, those last surviving roving bands, they were fighting their own independent battles. They never actually fought to take territory, they just fought to protect what they had and to protect the ones that they loved, which, while noble, didn't gain them any new areas or any new land for them to develop as a tribe. In their human forms, the Bunyip resembled the Aboriginal peoples of Australia at the time. In their lupus forms, which they called Thylacinus, they resembled the Thylacine. And if you don't know what a Thylacine is, as I've said that name several times throughout this video already, it's basically the equivalent of a dingo. Although this particular breed is now extinct. The Thylacine. The, the dingo still is very much a very big part of Australia. Because the Bunyip were able to reinvent themselves through Macaulay magic, there was no Métis Bunyip ever known to exist. Now, Australia, if you've ever been or if you know anything about the continent, it is a continent of extremely diverse biomes. The center of the continent is so hot that it's basically unlivable. In the north of the continent, it's a little bit more tropical. And most of the places that you will find life, signs of life, and places that you can actually live in are among the outer edges on the coast. And there was actually only a few changing breeds that found this 
area to be extremely suited for their needs. That would be the Ananasi, spiders, the Naga, snakes, the Makole, crocs, and let's not forget the Rokea, sharks. There was bats, there still is bats, but the Kamazots, they, uh, well, we're going to talk about them in a second here, but the Kamazots, their, their story is also tragic. I did talk about the Kamazots in this video up here, so if you're interested in them, please check that video out. With how isolated Australia was, the War of Rage never really affected the continent at all. Newcomers were very rare to the continent, and because of just how difficult it was to live in this area, and because of the strongholds that the Ananasi, the Naga, and the Makole had, it was very difficult for new changing breeds to set up their cairns here. Most ended up actually leaving. The Kamazots were one of the only changing breeds that came and stayed, and the reason they came was because they were escaping the War of Rage, and they brought with them the horror stories that all the other pharaoh were going through. The Bunyip weren't actually considered to be Guru or werewolves, at least not by any of the changing breeds who already lived in Australia. So when the Bunyip came to escape the damage that was done to them from the War of Rage, this is where the Kamazots felt bad for them. They empathized with their situation. All of the changing breeds kept a very close eye on the Bunyip as they were extremely suspicious of any new Guru. And the Guru nation didn't fully adopt the Bunyip or consider them to be one of their tribes. After the Bunyip had started to flourish as well as they did in Australia, that's when the Makole, the Kamazots, and even the Naga introduced themselves and basically took them into the fold. The Naga believed that they shared a lot in common with these mystic wolves. Now, when the Naga revealed their existence to the Bunyip, this particular Naga tribe was ostracized from the rest of the Naga. They were not supposed to reveal that they were alive, and yet they did, and this cost them a lot of their reputation, and it really set a lot of what the Naga goals were in terms of making everyone believe that they are dead, it set everything back, so they, they were not happy with this. Now, with the War of Rage, the Shadow Lords in South America, they were slaughtering the Kamazots, and to the last, they were exterminated and purged. This affected the Kamazots in Australia because madness was taking hold of Bat, and this shifted into the Australian Kamazots as well. Their behavior changed and they became way more erratic, and even as they learned that more Guru were starting to come to Australia. They had this information. They knew that more were going to be coming. They confronted the Bunyip about it and wanted answers as to why the Guru were slaughtering their kind. And the Bunyip, they had no idea. This wasn't a good enough answer for the Kamazots, and they withheld some very important information from the Bunyip. The information that they withheld was the fact that Guru were arriving on the shores of Australia. It actually wasn't just the Bunyip that the Kamazots held this information from, it was everybody. So all of the changing breeds living in Australia, they were taken by surprise. This led into a new war that happened called the War of Tears, and this was specific to Australia. This unfortunately meant the end of the Bunyip, but they died with honor and they died with glory to the last. Now the War of Tears, while it did happen in Australia, it was because of the European Guru, the European settlers that came to Australia. It was very damaging for the native peoples that lived there, and even to this day, it still affected them greatly. The Europeans who came over introduced many new invasive species of plant and animals, and this is still wreaking havoc in Australia today. The Bunyip were protectors of the Umbra in Australia. This was called the Dreamtime. Black Spiral Dancers had a hand in the destruction of the Bunyip. The Guru who came over were actually tricked into believing that the Bunyip were damaging the Dreamtime. They organized a hunt of the Bunyip and they exterminated them to the last. And it wasn't until the last Bunyip was killed that the Black Spiral revealed their hand in what they had done. The Naga in the area did try to step in and fill the shoes of the Bunyip as the umbral protectors, they just weren't as effective at it. Now, there's a few scenarios for Werewolf the Apocalypse that talk about revival for the Bunyip. One of them is actually a mockery breed recreation of the Bunyip. Some DNA was found, it was extracted. The problem with this was 
because it was a physical creation, they did not have this spiritual connection that they used to, and they did not line up with the history that is known about the Bunyip. The Bunyip were more pacifist. The mockery breed that was created was way more aggressive, and these brand new Bunyip actually <laughs> forced their creator to walk the Black Spiral, so they're worm-tainted now as well. Now that's not canon, that's just something that happened in an apocalypse scenario. Tell me what you think about the Bunyip in the comments below. Did I miss any important bits? Is there anything else that you would like to know about the Bunyip that I didn't talk about? Thank you to all of my patrons who support me and support the channel. Thank you for enjoying what I do and believing in me. Autumn Alchemist, Orbs McMellons, RRSPQ, Ducky, Vox, Cane Root, War Pony, Get of Math Rocks, BA Bravo, Arutvin, The First Layer, Bones Malone, Westheimer, and Ain't No Waifu. If you would like to get your name on that list, you can check out my Patreon, link is in the description below. If you would like to learn more about some of the extinct changing breeds, the lost breeds if you will, I have a playlist on the screen for you now. My name's Nathaniel, this has been The Maple Table. Thank you so much for your subscription. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.